Hello, everybody. Welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday, the 13th of February. I I messed up when I was recording, and so you're going to find um, you have two you have two different videos for Thursday, so you have extras to watch on Thursday. Um, so I realized really late at night on Tuesday night or on Monday night that I didn't have one um, recorded for Tuesday. I don't know what happened. Lost my mind. Um, but I just wanted to check in and say, how y'all doing? And if you haven't had a chance, I really hope that you all get, take a chance to go on a retreat. As if you were watching, you'd know that I was, uh, last week, you'd know that I had pre-recorded on a session, especially because I wasn't going to be around. I went to Toronto to the Sisterhood of St. John Divine and hung out with the sisters there and had an absolutely blessed week. Had some confusion at the airport because my flight was canceled and it was supposed to be rebooked and then they didn't tell me it was rebooked and I just don't have good luck with the Edmonton airport it just never seems to work out but next time I fly I'll be from the Winnipeg airport so well we'll try something new there um when I did finally get to St. Sisters of St. John the Divine on Tuesday morning last week uh, I was welcomed by this incredible group of people these women who have dedicated their lives to to prayer and service and worship and I, when I got there it was a grace day the first Tuesday of the month is a grace day so they don't have any scheduled worship and everything's just a little bit different the the, the routine is a little different um, but I was there unbeknownst to me I was there for a silent retreat apparently when I booked my retreat I somehow gave them the idea that I would be there for a silent retreat which in one way was great because what they did was they gave me a group a room called the hermitage and it's actually a little, you go in the door, there's a little sort of vestibule, there's a washroom, there's a room to the left with a bed and a desk and a chair, and a room to the right with a little kitchenette and a comfortable reclining rocking chair and um, a microwave and a stove and all those kinds of things. And that's pretty much where I spent my time. And it's amazing how quickly you can adapt to something, especially when it's something peaceful. That first day I got there Tuesday, they weren't worshiping together. So I got there Tuesday, went down for lunch uh, and it's a silent lunch. So you go in and you um, get your meal and then you, you eat your meal and then you read. Um, you they have books underneath the table, <laughs> your magazines. You can take it whatever you like um, until the half hour is up and then they ring a bell and then you leave. Um, and then I spent the afternoon um, a little bit of time in spiritual direction with Sister Connie, which was less spiritual direction, more chatting, which was good for me. It's what I needed. Um, and then in the evening, I prayed and I read my book and I sort of sat in my room and I did break my silence to call my husband every night and chat with him for a little while. But it was two hours ahead of time. And you'd think that I would be thinking like a Tuesday night at nine in Ontario, you'd think it would feel like, well, it's seven o'clock in Edmonton. I'm wide awake. Nope, I was dead tired. <laughs> Um, and I found a rhythm that every day I would, I would get up in the morning and go downstairs and have breakfast and then go for morning prayer with the sisters and then go back up and have a nap for two hours and go back downstairs for Eucharist at noon and then have lunch. And then I ended up writing my sermon working, um, which was interesting because I was writing it longhand, like with a pen on paper, because I didn't take my computer with me. And that was a real gift. I, when I first started writing sermons, I didn't use a, I wasn't a very fast typist. I used to write my sermons by hand. It didn't take me long before I figured out I, it was faster to write them on my computer. But going back to right hand, so longhand writing was really good for me. Now, on the 25th of February, you'll find out whether or not it was good for you <laughs> in my sermon. But it was good for me because it slowed me down. I went and I sat in the library um, all by myself um, and because they're working and praying and doing their own thing and I was the only guest there so I went and sat in the library and, and and wrote out my sermon longhand and prayed and listened to the birds it was really warm so I opened up the window and there were a few birds out in Ontario at the time and just really appreciated the timing and the opportunity to think as I wrote and to be appreciative of every moment um, and then I had my spiritual direction at 3 30 and then more um, evening prayer and then supper and then an hour and a half of um, reading uh, and then back down for Compline and then I would talked to Rob and then I'd head for bed um, and I had taken my iPad with some downloaded um, videos and watching West Wing do you remember that movie or that show 
I didn't watch it when it came out, but I've, I've, I've downloaded several seasons of it. And it was a really, I found it really powerful because the, the, the things that, that the president um, was, was, who was played by Martin Sheen and the people around him were teaching me were themes about leadership and reminding me and teaching me of things about the question, what will, who will I be as a bishop? When will I know I'm a bishop? And, and it really, it gave me my time at the convent, gave me a lot of time to think and to consider and to pray. One of the, one of the questions Sister Connie asked me, we were talking about, um, I was laying in bed one night thinking, I'm going to be a bishop. And okay, I'm going to be a bishop. Like it's not sinking in yet. And so she asked me, you know, when, when you got married, did you know what it would be like to be a wife? And I said, well, no. And she said, well, how did you know? When did you know you were a wife? I told her I, for various and sundry reasons, the night of our wedding, because the wedding reception was in a church, we had to clean up. We couldn't leave it um, to the next day. So everybody sort of disappeared. And my new husband and our best man and his girlfriend and a few other people were still sticking around. And when everybody else had gone home, I changed out my white dress shoes to my running shoes and helped and stood there in my wedding dress um, taking down t tables and putting gifts in cars. And then Rob and I had brought our own cars to the church. So we drove our individual cars to the hotel where we changed into our pajamas, ordered pizza and sat on the bed and, and wrote out um, our list of thank yous of who we needed, like going through the cards to make sure we were just wired. We couldn't, couldn't settle. So um, we wrote, wrote out our list of who we needed to say thank you and what gifts they had given, things like that. And fell asleep and then morning we ran and picked up the, the Rob's kids who were I think three and five at the time who were staying down the hall with their grandparents in the hotel room and I knew I was a wife I drove the kids back to the apartment Rob helped um, his cousin and best man Kenny to deal with some stuff and take some rental stuff back and then later that day we drove the boys back to their moms in Sarnia and I knew I was a wife it the, I knew I was a wife in reflection, because I just started doing wife things, living the married life. So Sister Connie asked me, how will you know you're a bishop? And I realized, I'll know I'm a bishop when I celebrate my first Episcopal liturgy, when I do my first thing as a bishop. I'll know I'm a bishop when I have that first conversation, when I'm wearing my ring and my purple shirt and my pectoral cross, and the person sitting across from me doesn't look at me like I'm their parish priest looks at me like I'm their bishop. I'll know I'm a bishop when I have to make my first decision. It'll just happen. And it really, the time at SSGD really helped me to understand that, that it is important to, to not worry about what comes next. It is important to simply trust that we have been prepared for whatever is to come next and recognize that in the stepping into a new thing, we can't prepare. We can't, we can't. Michael Phelps could be coming the world's fastest swimmer and winning the most gold medals at the Olympics. Could not have known how to swim before he set per, before he first jumped into the water. It took jumping into the water to learn that he had some skills and then develop them. I won't know how to be a bishop until I'm a bishop. I didn't know how to be a wife or a stepmom until I started being one. You don't, you didn't know how to be who you are today until you started living into what you are today. And that's the beautiful thing. When we find that place, when we have find the courage to step in to the water and say, okay, here I go, sink or swim. We've obviously found that we swim. And for those of you who are feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, feeling like you're not swimming, you are, you're here, you're doing it, you are being you. And now maybe that the you that you are could use a little polishing, a little more practice. Absolutely, of course. I'm still, as a parish priest of over 24 years, I, I could use a little more practice. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I'm still learning every day. As a bishop, I will learn every day until the day I die. As a wife, same thing. We need to take time, though, to reflect on that and remember that we don't. We are not called to be perfect. We're not called to know how to do everything right away. 
We're simply called to take each day and enter into it and find the rhythm. It might be a rhythm of morning prayer, Eucharist, evening prayer, Compline. It might be a rhythm of taking a nap when you're tired or reading a book or stopping doing something by computer and doing it longhand because it gives you a different perspective. But we all need to make that, those decisions and make that take the time, I think, to be retrospective, to to think about what we're doing and to acknowledge that we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And if you feel like you're not doing okay, remember, you're your own worst critic. Because everybody looking at you, I guarantee you, somebody has looked at you sometime in your life and you've never known it. And they've said to themselves, I wouldn't be able to walk a mile in that guy's shoes. I wouldn't be able to handle her high heels. And yet you're doing it every day. So good on you. Keep it up. And then sometimes you might need to take a break to go see the sisters. And if you get a chance, once the retreat house is open, again, I really do encourage you, if you get a chance, go to the SSJD in Toronto or go find a convent or a monastery that takes in people for retreats, people who are on a, on a pilgrimage and let them, let their, their rhythm of life help you find your own again. Have a great day. God bless. Tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. And I do have a video for Ash Wednesday. And then Thursday, you'll have two because I'm an idiot and I'm still learning. So better, better two than none, right? <laughs> have a great day and God bless everybody.